Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to PBA at Noon. I'm Paul Benwell, and I'm joined by my colleague, Sophie Caesar. We have a great tech, a uh, great company today, Analytics Insight. I love this. Analytics Insight is an AI company transforming data into knowledge. Their AI engine powers disruptive finance uh, analytics and fintech applications. They develop and market cloud-based platforms providing financial content, stock trading, and research solutions for you guys out there, the banks, the brokers, and the investors. Today, we have with us Scott Urquhart. VP of Corporate Development to talk to us about the technology and the three verticals of their business. Welcome back, Scott. Great to see you. Nice to see you, Paul. Uh, so feel, free to, you. feel free to get started whenever you're ready, and we'll have some questions for you at the end of the presentation. So Certainly, thanks, yeah. and go ahead. Uh, thanks. It's nice to be back with you again. It's been, I guess, three years since we presented to your group last, and uh, pre-pandemic, so we've covered a lot. Um, uh, since then, and pretty happy to uh, take you through our story. Um, I'll just share my screen. Uh, Analytics Insight, we're, as you mentioned, a FinTech AI um, and workforce optimization initiatives, publicly traded on the venture exchanges as uh, ALY on the, on the TSXV. Um, I'll draw your attention to our forward-looking disclaimers, which will guide um, this presentation. The strategic initiatives that we have in our company, I'm gonna focus primarily today on, on two of those, Capital Cube uh, and MarketWall. And they're, they're both in the financial services uh, industry. We also have a Euclides Technologies, which is a workforce optimization uh, initiative as well in our company. But just in the interest of time, I'm gonna focus primarily on the, on the two uh, that um, are, are probably of, of in, interest to, to your investors, and that's being Capital Cube. Uh, and market wall. What we're doing um, in our company is, is focusing to enable the key strategic shifts that are occurring today in the brokerage industry. And that namely being uh, the analytics and research, the, the whole idea of AI machine learning has enabled a lot of big data analytics opportunities now for financial analysis on companies. And we have a platform that we have built to do that. The MIFID II regulations, um, particularly in Europe, have also unbundled the trading fees and research costs. So as a result, there's, there's a reduced number of analysts that are covering the small to mid cap uh, stocks. And so uh, we have a solution there. Um, and, and then of course, uh, your group would know this, um, the trading costs and, and applications for stock trading have increased dramatically over the last few years, um, bringing in low cost trading, mobile stock trading, and uh, we're rolling out a platform in Europe uh, to do that uh, as well. So first, Capital Cube. This is the, the heart of our, our, our company, the, the engine that the, our company was founded around. We built a, a machine learning platform to, to conduct analysis on big data analytics opportunities. Um, we focus primarily on the financial analytics. It doesn't mean we can't do other analytics, but we've, that's been our focus. We cover 50,000 uh, worldwide stocks, as well as North American ETFs on our platform. And uh, a platform's capable of some 100 billion daily computations. What we do is we, we bring in the financial data from the financial filings that are on CDAR, EGAR, and so on. And we, we generate lots of insights as to how a company is performing financially compared to its peer group. We algorithmically select the peer group so we're picking companies of uh, like industry. And so with that, we can generate uh, research reports as well as provide uh, various um, analytic um, capability sets and scoring a company um, uh, based on how it's, it's performing uh, to its peer group. Uh, we have a number of proprietary scores. We continue to develop this. Um, we, we recently, about a year ago, added uh, ESG uh, scoring metrics uh, as well. So Users of the platform uh, then can um, uh, determine the fundamental analysis of a company, the dividend quality of a company, that sort of thing. And these, these scores become very, very powerful. If you think about it in a world where we're uh, now trading stocks online and, um, and doing so in, in self-managed accounts, 
the whole concept of risk uh, profiling then therefore it becomes quite important. Uh, meaning, um, and as those in the industry would know, KYC, know your client, is uh, is a very important uh, regulatory metric. And so we we have a, our platform is capable of of uh, helping to determine the uh, the financial profile of a company and whether it would match the the risk profile of an investor. And that becomes um, a, a powerful uh, capability set that, that we're, we're ready for. And we believe the regulators are going to, uh, to move to require that. Refinitiv is our key partner in our capital cube initiative. Uh, they, um, uh, they were the former Thompson Reuters division. It was spun out a few years ago. London stock exchange just acquired Refinitiv for 27 billion a year ago. So they're one of the world's largest financial uh, markets data uh, providers. We've had a three year relationship with them and we have published on their platform over now over 26,000 uh, capital cube reports. So you, you think about that, that's the power of machine created uh, research reports and our capability to, to ramp this to, uh, to, to large scale. We've also built a robo advisor and um, it's not yet commercially deployed, but we're preparing for that. We run it in the background. We continue to train that robo on on various market conditions, and we've been uh, operating it now for a few years, and so we're, we're getting to uh, to know that. The, obviously, robo is uh, increasing; the use of robo is increasing for for management of assets, and it's expected to to be over a couple of trillion dollars managed by robo uh, going forward. Marketwell is our fintech division, and this is our European initiative. Um, uh, Marketwell is headquartered in in uh, Italy, and um, so we we uh, partnered with a bank there, and I'll talk a bit more about that bank, Atessa San Paolo, um, on this initiative, um, uh, I guess, we, around six years ago. And we've developed a lot of technology and platform applications, which are uh, really um, uh, quite meaningful. Um, and we're rolling those out in Europe now. So this is not just an idea. It's an actual, these are actual platforms. Based around Gemina, we call Gemina, which is our white label uh, B2B style uh, product offering. Uh, that powers Investor Pro, which is our uh, discount stock trading um, brokerage division. And uh, we'll be using those assets uh, to also build out the North American stock trading platform, which we're, which we're working toward as well. So a bit about Gemina. Uh, Gemina is our trading research platform that um, allows banks and brokers to um, utilize uh, this platform to enable the digital transformation uh, for stock trading applications. It's um, uh, very much focused around bringing in news, rich content, uh, AI, our capital cube data comes in on this. And uh, a user then can uh, use this platform to trade using a low cost trading and yet have um, uh, access to research, which is largely the missing link by most of the stock, the discount stock trading platforms. And so we've, um, we've been uh, implementing this, it's been rolled out now. It's, there's two European banks that are using this platform and, um, and uh, other partners as well. So Gemini powers Morningstar Global Market as well as Investor Pro. Uh, so let's dig into what each of those initiatives mean Morningstar, probably obviously a very well-known um, company to your investor group. This is um, a firm that's based on primarily on, on market research. They're a, a $12 billion publicly traded organization. Uh, we've partnered with Morningstar for the development of Morningstar Global Market. And uh, this is an existing platform. We've been working with Morningstar for over two years, around three actually. Uh, to build the Morningstar Global Market. This has uh, been rolled out, tested, stress tested at an actual um, bank location uh, in Europe. And just last month, we announced that uh, Morningstar would now be uh, reselling uh, this application, Morningstar Global Market. Uh, so they'll be selling it to their enterprise uh, level uh, customers and institutional style customers. Uh, it's available in the EMA region, which is Europe, Middle East, Africa. And uh, that platform now is being rolled out by Morningstar 
um, to their clients. So this is a key enablement uh, for Morningstar to enter the institutional um, uh, level for allowing, again, allowing clients to uh, trade from their research platform and also to, um, uh, to allow uh, discount uh, stock trading platforms that are enabled to bring in Morningstar content, consensus analysis, and that sort of thing into the platform. Um, Investo Pro is our European online financial broker. This is um, a multi-device trading platform that allows users to trade using their mobile phones, uh, as well as their desktop, laptops, and that sort of thing. Um, we received regulatory approval on this last year, April uh, 2021, and it's been introduced now to Intestus and Paulo's customers. I'll talk a bit more about Intestus and Paulo in a moment. Uh, we've we've also made application for payment processing um, on this platform, and that's awaiting regulatory approvals. If we're successful there, then that will mean that we'll be able to uh, transfer payments from your stock trading uh, account, which will be a, a powerful in, in the world of being able to to pay your um, your credit card bills and that sort of thing straight from your your stock trading account. So what Investor Pro does is it provides financial quotations, again, very rich on research and content, full financial analysis, um, various analytic elements, including consensus rating, um, stock price the targets and, and that sort of thing that, um, that, that uh, individual users uh, want. A bit about Antestas and Paola, they're, they're the largest bank in Italy. It's uh, Italy, of course, is the G7 country with 60, 60 million people, nearly twice the size of Canada, population-wise. Um, Tessa Sapel became no, well noted for its its digital res revolution um, that has occurred over the last three years. So in 2018, they announced they were investing close to three billion euros to digitize their business. And uh, sort of five years ago, many people, particularly in Canada, would have considered you know, some of the European banks to be troubled. Um, they not only have, have changed that, it's, it's gone, they've become very dynamic. And, uh, and what this digitization strategy allowed them to do was be well prepared so that when uh, the pandemic hit, uh, the customers were able to easily and quickly move to the online channels and they were ready for it. So they posted their best year ever um, in 2021 with a net income of over four and a half uh, or 4.2 billion euros, meaning that it rivals in profitability size to CIBC and, and that sort of thing. So Justice Palo is the uh, 26th largest bank in the world, uh, fourth largest in Europe by market cap. They have um, around 20 million customers in 40 countries. Um, but most important to us is they have now seven and a half million users using their um, mobile uh, banking app. So they're at the very least checking their bank balances using mobile phones. So seven and a half million is significant. It's up from zero five years ago because it didn't exist five years ago. And we're proud to be uh, the stock trading application uh, for this bank. So to put it in perspective for those, particularly in the Canadian market, um, so Investo Pro then becomes to Intesta Sapala what iTrade is to Scotiabank, for example. And uh, so uh, Investo Pro is the online uh, online broker uh, for this uh, for this bank. And um, a, a key attribute is the ability uh, for a customer to use their existing uh, banking sign-in credentials to log on, to also log on to their stock trading application. So if you think about the seven and a half million people that are using uh, their banking logins to check their bank balance and so on, that becomes a very sizable market opportunity for those who wish to also open a stock trading account. Again, rich in content, uh, rich on news, trades are conducted uh, through the bank's uh, market hub trading platform. Uh, it's already tested. This is, this is a product that again, it's not an idea. This is up and running. It's rolling out. Uh, clients are being loaded on it uh, right now. The, another strategic relationship that we have is with Samsung. Um, we are a Samsung partner and the Investor Pro app is preloaded on a number of Samsung devices. Um, we're part of the smart TV and wearables uh, strategy for, for Samsung. 
Um, the Samsung relationship is quite important in Europe. Uh, why? Because Samsung has the largest market share of the smartphone market uh, in Europe. That's different than um, the North American market. Obviously, Apple uh, dominates, but in Europe, Samsung dominates. So this is a key partnership for us. Um, we expect to continue to, to do more here. Um, Samsung is a, a leader in, in global global TV market. Um, I personally purchased a Samsung TV at Christmas time uh, this year, and, and the Investor Pro app is one of the um, highlighted apps uh, for the financial apps on that TV, and it's a pretty easy download. So this is up and running. It's an existing, uh, again, powerful relationship uh, part for us. We're working on a North American uh, trading and research platform. So taking everything that I've talked about so far in the presentation and uh, bundling it all together into um, uh, something that's more North American focused, uh, tailored to the specific needs for North American users. So we're working on that. We're, uh, we're being uh, selective and careful in our approach as to how we do this. Um, obviously, you know, stock trading platforms are are, are, are fairly plentiful in the North American market. So we're approaching this um, um, uh, uh, delicately, and, and uh, we're, but we're very mindful of the opportunity that's in front of us for combining the attributes of Capital Cube, again, stock analysis and research reports at scale, uh, along with the trading applications, allowing a customer to trade stocks uh, with, with intelligence. Our workforce optimization division, this is Euclides, again, just to touch on it just briefly. Um, this is where we're, we're uh, looking at a different industry segment, field service management industry, and applying analytics capabilities there. We've got a team that's uh, expert systems integrators uh, in this division, and uh, uh, that as well is aligned uh, with, with powerful industry partners. Sometime when we have more time, I'm happy to, uh, to explore that division um, a bit deeper. Um, quickly on our financial information and capital structure, again, traded ALY in the venture exchange. We, we have a market cap of around 55 million uh, just now. Stock's been down with some of the um, technology names which have come off um, over the last few months. Uh, we have 95 million shares outstanding. Um, we do have warrants as well that are publicly traded. We raised uh, close to 10 million last June. That was priced at 70 cents a share. Um, the, uh, so we're um, compelling opportunity in the market uh, just now for what I feel we have going. Uh, in terms of our, our revenue profile, um, Analytics current company uh, is running in around 3 million, um, 3, 4 million a year in revenue. MarketWall being our joint venture partner which we own 49% of is uh, pushing now close to, well, it was six and a half million uh, last year uh, for 2020. And we'll, we'll report our audited financials here at the, uh, at the end of this month here in a couple of weeks. Um, uh, but if you think about market walls growing, well, growing from zero uh, in terms of revenues uh, six years ago to, uh, to this revenue growth. And, and that we really doesn't, uh, include any of the Investo Pro growth because that, that rollout is just uh, just commencing uh, just now. So we expect uh, those revenues to, to continue to ramp accordingly. Um, our team is, is led by Prakash Hariharan, who is uh, the chairman CEO. He's formerly a portfolio manager at Front Street Capital here in Toronto. Um, we've um, we have others on our team. Um, uh, Chaith, who is the managing director um, and co-founder of the company, Marco, who heads up our desktop and uh, he's heads up our market wall division. He used to be the former head of the desktop and internet applications at the London Stock Exchange. Uh, he heads up our Euclides division and myself, corporate development. I was um, a former with the, uh, two different brokerage firms uh, here in Canada. Um, our contact information is um, uh, on the screen. We keep our, our website, which is Analytics Insight, and that's with an X. We keep that fairly well up to date with all of our investor materials, and we're more than happy to um, talk about our story at any time. And uh, with a bit of luck, uh, Sophie, I think I've kept this under the 20 minute mark uh, uh, with a bit of precision, hopefully. So. I'll turn it you back have. You. Thank you, Scott. That was great. I know we probably could have taken a full hour to, to get into everything, but hopefully these questions will be able to uh, break it down for us. Um, 
so let's start with uh, this one from Coil uh, Colin, uh, Colin, sorry, and then I will hit the other ones. Um, do your various platforms support derivatives, futures and options in Canada, the US and Europe? It's mostly European. So the European platform does include derivatives um, and certificates as they're called in Europe. Uh, so trading European stocks. So what we currently offer on the platform in Europe uh, today is um, European list of stocks, number of different countries, and including uh, North American uh, uh, BATS, B-A-T-S, which is really the large cap uh, US listed stocks. So for example, you won't find um, the venture listed stocks in Canada listed on the trading platform uh, in Europe. Um, but yes, it's built for um, it's built for derivative certificates. We're all, we're providing numerous quotations um, there of, of commodities, stocks, and bonds, and so forth as well. If we have a bit more time, we can do a, a really quick demo on that platform too. Okay, excellent. Um, so do you also draw your data from other financial institutions? So I'm guessing this question means, you know, how do you, how does it all come together? Yeah, um, right now we're, we're bringing in pure financial data. So it's primarily financial uh, analytics engine for Capital Cube. Uh, MarketWall is drawing in a variety of different uh, news element sources. So that's everything from, for example, business television uh, feeds, uh, social media feeds, that sort of thing come in on that platform as well. Uh, we're also just in the beginnings of working on a relationship here um, as, to bring in additional social media uh, and other uh, data elements that that uh, will have an influence on stocks. So we, uh, we didn't talk too much about that, but we're in the beginnings of that and we're working on some of those projects. So uh, yeah, we, we uh, believe very much in that there are a number of different elements that affect this behavior of a stock, not just the financials. Uh, and so we, uh, we aim to be, uh, to be ready for that and we're working on those things. So um, quick question of my own. So for example, when we had that, you know, Reddit GameStop issue, mm -hmm. uh, then you're, what you're looking at is doing is drawing that, uh, I guess that data as well to be able to give investors kind of an idea of what's going, a global picture, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like those are short squeeze initiatives or short squeeze occurrences that uh, occurred quite a lot. And I've, I've studied those uh, for a bit over the last year or two. Uh, three years ago, nobody really cared too much about short squeeze opportunities because the Reddit and, and retail trading crowd weren't, weren't at that time big enough to create a short squeeze. They now are. Yeah. So those are those are key measurement uh, tools, and we're we're specifically active in in bringing in some data feeds for that. We haven't launched it yet, but um, yeah, we're we're thinking a lot about those things uh, yeah. because they're those are important metrics. You know, if you've got um, a a uh, a retail uh, army, and they're it's large enough to be an army now. If that comes uh, uh, stomping toward a stock, then yeah, it's gonna it's gonna have an impact. So yeah, interesting. Um, okay, so here's another question. If oil is very active, how can the platform bring everything into focus? If oil is active? Yeah. Meaning if oil prices go up? Exactly, yeah. Or up yeah, or down, so, or yeah. Yeah, so we, we um, on our... Uh, on our investor for platform, we provide quotations on oil and uh, all commodities, actually. Um, but uh, I think perhaps the question, the, the person asking the question might be hinting at, uh, do, do we have at this point uh, capabilities the platform that says if oil goes up by X, then do the stock, the corresponding change in value of the stocks uh, occur by Y? Um, that's pure calculation. We can do that. We haven't offered it as a product yet. But yeah, those are, um, uh, again, powerful analytic insights that can be trans let's see, let's get fun, yeah. uh, that, that can be transformed into help being uh, again, more insightful as to what would the impact of a $5 rise in oil um, be and how would it impact the stocks accordingly. We all know those things have a, a occurrence, particularly commodity related uh, investments have a, have a strong correlation to the uh, to the to the commodity, so yeah, correlations and calculations; those are absolutely things we do in our platform. We do not have that as a product of yet, but we gain. We're working on a lot of those things. Yes, a lot in the pipeline. Which brings me to my next question. Uh, so you have many divisions. Are you thinking of maybe spinning one off, or or do you want to keep everything under the same house? 
Yeah, and it's a very question. A couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, I guess now, we were actually uh, talking about the potential of spinning off market wall because we've always felt that our market wall um, investment uh, which we own 49% of, and it's not consolidated on our financial statements. We've always viewed that as a hidden asset on our balance sheet uh, because it's not understood. Most people just, they don't understand the mechanics of how something that's 49% owned uh, is, is held in terms of value over company. So yeah, we were talking about spinning that off, um, but you know, the value of market wall has increased quite dramatically and as witnessed by the things we just talked about, the fact we've got a regulatory approved platform, stock trading platform, it's loading clients, partnered with a 45 billion euro bank, partnered with um, uh, Morningstar, Samsung, and so on. Those are, those are powerful uh, capability side. And so we're, we're, it's going to be, we're, well, we're, we're very mindful of it all. And we're, we're uh, giving a lot of thought to, how do we uh, shape our company to make sure that our investors are um, exposed to what that valuation drive is and occurs? So we're, I won't say that we're, we're making plans to spin off market wall because we're, we're but we, we do want our, uh, our, our investors to understand the value that's been created in market wall. So there's a very good chance that the market wall um, would be seen as being valued at greater than the value of our parent company right now. I could easily make that argument. Mm. Uh, and uh, so I think over the, over the coming months um, and quarters, we are going to um, uh, work on, on, on uh, strategies that can uh, help our investors realize more about that, that opportunity because it's a significant opportunity. So I've had this question come up more than once. Um, it's concerning the the data and the security of the site of your site. So you want to maybe go into that a little bit? Yeah, so the um, yeah, we've, we've spent um, a lot of time uh, on, on both Capital Cube and the best of our platforms uh, to make sure that the, the data. So it, let's kind of go through through that. Our Capital Cube platform, we're, we're simply providing information. So we're not carrying any client assets uh, on book or anything in Capital Cube. And our Investor Pro, which does uh, facilitate stock trading application, um, and that's that's a legitimate question, a very uh, legitimate uh, concern around when you have any platform that has client accounts and those sorts of things, how is it handled? And, and our answer to that is, is we, we're tied in directly uh, with the largest bank in, in a G7 country to develop that. It's been co-developed with them. Uh, the trading uh, the platform is through their trading platform. Uh, so uh, we that's that's well underhand and well understood, and we've spent quite a bit of time on that. It's um, a, it is quite important to make sure that that uh, the security measures are in place. So I guess, I guess in summary, uh, we have built this platform at bank quality scale. Wow. Um speaking of banks, <laughs> uh, do you have any analytics on cryptocurrencies? Uh, short answer is no, okay. um, we, we don't. We flirted with crypto in terms of a concept of, of uh, providing both analytics as well as trading capabilities on our platform. Uh, we've not yet entered that, but it's, um, it, it's certainly one that's, that's uh, we're watching. Um, and uh, we have not yet uh, not yet launched that, and, and I realize that the crypto trading has is, is obviously gotten a lot more popular in the last the last few years. Yeah, uh, my experience is the banks don't quite know what how to value that. <laughs> um, well, there's a bit of risk around it. For, if you, if you think about it from the perspective of the banks, right, and 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 we do because we're partnered. We are a, we we're a platform that's bank bank grade uh, then we have to therefore follow the same lines of thinking uh, as the bank on that particular topic line okay so nadia has a question here uh is it possible to get with one click only info relevant to a stock or commodity from all the info categories i guess this is very specific to the platform maybe this is it making sense to you yeah, I think, yeah, so the, if you're a European user um, and you log on to Investor Pro, then, then yes, the one click on the stock, uh, you can get a lot of information um, um, in, that, in that stock. So 
we, we're, we're providing a lot. It, it's very rich content. And um, not only is, is it financial, we're, we, we can see the consensus analysts, the companies, we provide the five-year rolling, uh, five-year target of the analyst target prices on that stock. Uh, in some cases, we even are providing the investor, uh, investor relations material that we have scraped from the company's website. And uh, so we, we do all of those things. The, the actual, so from a commodities perspective, it's a different tab. Uh, so you, instead of stocks, you go to commodities, you look for gold, oil, whatever the case might be, and you click on that, bonds likewise. But yeah, the, the whole, the premise of InvestoPro, it, it was built with the mindset that if you think about a trader today, they've got, they're sitting with the TV, with BNN in Canada, it's BNN playing. Uh, they've got a, their computer, they have um, a monitor or three uh, that's showing various commodity feeds and uh, stock trading application and trading platform. So a bunch of different applications. Our whole strategy is to bring that into one. Okay. So the idea being that one, uh, the Investor Pro user has one application, multi-device, phones, laptops, iPads, you name it, TVs, um, that you get all of your financial information on. So you watch your financial uh, news network and a small window at the bottom. You've got your analyst, uh, all your analyst information, your research reports, your AI analytics, your your fundamental scores. Your it's all there, all in one platform. That is the idea with which we we built this platform. Um, oh, and I see Paul's joined us. One quick question before uh, Paul, uh, I'm sure has questions for you. What about Canadian users? Is there is there a, a plan to bring the platform here? Yeah, so we and we've announced this. We're what we're planning to do is is uh, we're in, we're working on building a North American style platform. The user experience is slightly different between European users and North American users. We're, we're aware of that, and so we would aim to uh, to tailor it accordingly. Um, but ideally, it would be best, um, the same as we've done in Europe, we partnered with the bank there, it's, it's, it would make, the ideal scenario would be that we would partner with, with an established provider here. So we have tool, we, our tools are enablement tools. So if you think about a financial institution that, that doesn't otherwise have um, retail discount trading, which includes, quite frankly, a number of the full service brokers here in Canada, uh, that just haven't rolled out a, uh, a discount stock trading application. They're, they're faced with this situation of either uh, eventually uh, losing a lot of their clients to the discount stock trading platform or finding a rapid way of addressing the retail stock trading um, uh, solution opportunity. We are an enablement for that. And so, yeah, we're, we're, uh, that's, that's how we're planning to, to approach it. And yes, we are um, uh, definitely working on, on, on doing that. Okay, excellent. I, I have to ask this question. I got a couple of texts to me. Uh, does the platform provide buy or sell signals in uh, the analysis? Yeah, so I, I'm gonna quickly say no, because <laughs> <laughs> otherwise we get sued, right? Because we said buy. What we do is we provide, we, like there's, we, we can't actually say buy because then if the client buys, no, no, that, that I appreciate. Then, then we're liable. But we can do a lot of things though, right? So we can say the, the, the quality score of this company when compared to its peers is low or high. And we, we can provide all that. We can provide the, the analyst consensus and their target and all of those things. So we can do a lot of that analysis, but at the end of the day, um, the, the individual investor has to make their own investment decision and take their own, uh, their own ultimate risk uh, associated with them. All right. <clears throat> uh, now, where do you rank when compared to companies that are similar to you right now? I know you're only European for the moment. So that kind of like uh, doesn't give a clear picture. But yeah. So where, where do, we, do you rank with the Europeans, shall we say? Or yeah. Well, look, um, and we're, I think you're probably chipping away at valuation, perhaps uh, in this equation. Um, yep. in terms of, yeah. We're a fifty million dollar company. We've not yet been like we're too small for institutions to own right at this present time. Okay. And that, that that creates a compelling opportunity for for retail investors here. Eventually, like the platforms that we built, and and there are a number of peers. I I can point to peers 
in other countries in Italy that are doing the same as what, what we're doing that are literally trading at 2 billion euro market caps. So as we uh, develop and roll out um, these applications and attract the users that we believe that we will uh, when we're partnered with a bank that has seven and a half million people using mobile banking app, um, then, then that valuation will change. And so that's the way I'd answer it to say, yeah, at some point we're going to be what I'll call re-rated into um, an institutional style investment under, uh, for those that understand Okay. Um, it's, uh, there aren't uh, what I continue to say is I don't know of many 55 million dollar Canadian market cap companies that can uh, that that are partnered with the uh, the multi-billion dollar corporations that, that we know I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that where do you uh, where do you get your data feed for your quotes and everything else I mean that's obviously from one source do you have a backup source like you know in case of breakdowns or things of that nature uh, yeah, so we're, we're, we're dealing with a number of the, uh, the different financial players and, and in this presentation, we already mentioned both Morningstar and Refinitiv um, uh, uh, as, as uh, data players that, that we interface with. Uh, so we, we draw financial data uh, there, but we also, some of the other, that I'll call it non-financial data that we're, that we're starting to draw in. Uh, we'll be bringing that in from from other sources because it's these are influence data sets that that will we think influence um, the behavior of a stock. So we're we're going to be looking at um, uh, other interesting uh, data sets uh, for that. On our ETF side, uh, we partner with a ETF specialty uh, provider on the ETF piece. It's North American ETFs, um, not worldwide, just North American. The final question I guess would have is here, can you break down how you generate income from the different platforms? Just quickly, you know, like, um, and, and is, I mean, the terms of uh, uh, getting your platform, is it on a monthly basis, an annual basis, or what's, what kind of contracts do you have to sign? Yeah, so we'll start with, um, with Capital Cube. We, 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 we've kind of... Uh, we're not really that active in promoting the individual users or individual subscribers of Capital Cube because uh, not, that's a research engine and we're more interested in the corporate relationship points that we have. So we have in, you know, corporate relationships uh, there and institutional uh, uh, clients that are bringing in uh, uh, the revenue associated with that. On the Investor Pro piece, which is the discount stock trading uh, platform, um, it's, it's priced generally at around uh, 10 euros per stock trade similar to the $10 per Canadian stock trade by most of the banks. Um, there's a discount on that if you're a bank customer. Uh, so we're just starting to load that on now. The other revenue pieces that MarketWall has uh, already generated is, is continuing um, uh, revenue streams from other institutional uh, grade products that we've also developed and uh, have rolled out. So. Those are in the form of licensing uh, models as well. And um, so that, that's the general breakdown of our, of our uh, revenue from the financial side. But do you lease it, do you lease it like on a monthly basis or like, uh, or can you sign a long-term, like uh, take it on an annual basis? The, uh, so if, it, if you're talking about an institution uh, who wants to license Gemini, for example, it would be a long-term license agreement um, we would uh, that would be an established license agreement with a bank or a brokerage firm to license the platform and they would roll it out to their clients and that would be a, like an annual license on a rolling um, uh, rolling three or five year basis uh, so that's that revenue stream and then investor pro is um, is where individual clients like you and me uh, simply log on open an account start trading stocks at 10 euros per trade all right so i mean the platforms are basically free but the, but the fees and like for the trading platform, the fees are where you're generating income is from the commissions that are, that you're charging. Yeah, exactly. Like in the same example that I referenced, like Scotia I trade exactly the same way, 10 okay. euro, 10 bucks, $10 a trade, trade stocks. You don't have to pay anything per month to have access to that. Well, Scott, this is interesting and you're right. We could go on for a lot longer and really break it down. So we'll have to get you to come back in the near future and we can do something else with you. Thanks to everyone today for joining in. Much appreciated. Um, and we'll keep you posted on anything that's going on with uh, analytics over the next uh, few months. So take care, everyone. And thanks again, Scott. Much appreciated.
thanks for the opportunity and anyone can feel free to reach out to me directly um, uh, to have a further chat. I'm happy to do this. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mark. All right, thanks. take care. Thanks, everyone.